Well, here we are again, folks, here in my, my humble den. Just want to tell you before I get started with this message, I'm doing much, much better. Have no pain in my leg. Went to see the doctor Tuesday. He said that I would be uh, keeping a, a new cast. They put a new cast on me. And I'll keep that until June 30th, which is 10 days away. That cast will be taken off, and the brace will be put on my leg, and then he's going to start ordering some, some therapy. First off here at home, they'll start manipulating that leg, stretching it some, stretching those tendons that I tore loose, and, and throughout July, I'll probably then eventually be going to a clinic, a rehab clinic maybe two or three times a day until they feel like they've given me the therapy I need to be back on my feet. And I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for your prayers. But today I wanted to talk to you about prophecy and preaching and what it, the things that those who prophesy and those who preach a very similar role. Sometimes we feel called to say certain things. You know, in delivering the good news of Jesus Christ, sometimes it doesn't appear to be good news sometimes, but we have this internal internal counselor that tries to draw from us messages to the people. And one of my favorite prophets was Jeremiah, so we're going to be looking for at some scriptures from the 20th chapter of Jeremiah, verses 7 to 13. Now, Jeremiah was one of those prophets who felt compelled to prophesy, to speak for the Lord God. And that's what prophecy meant back in those days, to be a spokesperson for God. And there had been many prophets some of them popular, but the thing about it, a lot of the prophets that were popular and liked were false prophets. They were not speaking the word of God to the people. So Jeremiah was actually speaking what he was receiving from God. And the thing about it, it, it made him not a very popular person. Jeremiah was like a party pooper. Everywhere he went, people would kind of hush up and say, well, there he comes again. He's going to give us all this crazy stuff that we're about to be attacked by the enemy, by the Babylonians, and that we're going to be taken into slavery. And they didn't want to believe it. Just like today, we don't want to believe that we're going to be harmed or Anything's going to happen to us if we don't live the life that God has called us into. So Jeremiah, just listen to these words from the 20th chapter, and we'll start with verse 7. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me. And you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. People didn't believe him. And so, <coughs> excuse me, they didn't believe him and they laughed at him. Sometimes he did crazy things to try to get the people to listen to him. <coughs> excuse me. First time I believe since I've started using these messages that I've had to take a sip of water. Appreciate all of you who's been listening to me and, and waiting each week for a message. So Jeremiah, he was beginning to wonder about himself. The people were beginning to dislike him. And some of them are, were beginning to get violent or at least threaten violence against him to shut up shut up this blabbermouth who keeps telling them things 
that they didn't believe would happen. And of course, the the leaders of Judah, Jeremiah had talked to them, and all of them thought he was crazy. <coughs> so he he's he's already he's he's telling God, you know, you've made me do this, and I've become a laughing stock. In verse 8, for whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout violence and destruction. He wouldn't prophesy in the good times that were coming. He was prophesying that bad times were coming. <coughs> violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. In verse 9, if I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his names. In other words, if he quits saying that, listen up, people, I'm giving you the word of God. You need to listen, and you need to try to come back to God because bad things are about to happen. Jeremiah saying, if I don't speak in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. He has to speak. There is something driving him to speak, and it's like a burning fire. And so he's, he certainly he, he must do what God has asked him to do to speak, to prophesy, and try to get this hard-hearted, hard-headed people of Judah to listen. So, Jeremiah says, I'm weary with holding it in. I cannot. It's like if I were preaching to my congregation or anybody and I decided, well, I'm just not going to say what I really want to say. I'm going to try to sugar it up a little bit. But then there's something that comes over me that says you are called to speak the truth. You, you are not called to comfort the afflicted. You're called to afflict the comfortable, so the same role, a preacher and a prophet. And then Jeremiah goes on to say, For I hear many whispering. They're talking behind his back. They're whispering about him. And they're saying, Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. And then he says, all my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. So he's losing friends, probably even family members, because he's, he's telling the truth. He's sharing the word of God with the people, and they're thinking, well, maybe he'll just stumble, and we can talk him into just shutting up to stop this mission that he's, that he's been appointed to or he says he's appointed to. Because they were worried about Jeremiah, that he's going to keep, he's going to keep losing friends, and he's going to keep losing listeners, and some of them might even do violence to him, to shut him up. And then Jeremiah says, talking to God here, O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. In other words, Jeremiah just really admitting to God that, that nobody is listening to him. And he's asking him to test the righteous, 
to see the heart and the mind, and let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. And then he says, Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. So Jeremiah is just admitting to God and to anybody that would listen that God is a God of justice. And God has did great things for Israel. Already the northern kingdom were dominated by the Assyrians and they were just about gone. But Judah was still there. And Jeremiah was prophesying to Judah. And you know, we, we run into a lot of things today. Nobody likes people with bad news. You know, we're hearing all the time from these COVID-19 experts telling us things are rough and things will probably get worse. This virus is not done with us, so a lot of times when these experts proclaim that the virus is real and it's growing and it's spreading and it's probably going to have a a time in the fall that it's going to get worse again. It's not over, folks. This is bad news for us. But we have to listen to them. We have to accept that they are diligently trying to tell us that this is not anything to fool around with. So those that say, wear your mask, continue to practice social distancing, it's to be done. It's to be accepted. And we have a mind. God gave us a mind. We need to protect ourselves. So rather it be back in the time of Jeremiah, we need to listen. You might call them prophets, but this time they have science to base their decisions on. We should, we should leave politics out of it. And we should listen to the experts in our church, the United Methodist Church, the conference are listening to health experts and they don't recommend yet that we gather. How can we gather when every day we keep exceeding the day previous, the reports it keeps going up the number of people who have the virus and we're getting more reports of deaths so I'm just saying prophecy, if you're called to be a prophet, sometimes you might as well get ready. People are not going to like you. They're not going to want to listen to you. But for our own safety, we should listen to these people who are experts on this disease. And so today the message is, you know, look at prophets, look at people. Some of them may be false, but be willing to believe when somebody tells us that times ahead are going to be rough, that we need to be careful, that we need to listen and we need to obey the guidelines so that one day we'll all be ready and able and, and, and we won't have contacted the virus and, and we can come back to church. I really look forward to that. Let us pray. God, thank you for lifting us up and giving us intelligence and giving us a will to protect ourselves against this terrible virus, a part of nature. You didn't create it to hurt us, but we are being hurt. We lift up those that are hurt, that, that are sick, and the families of those that have passed away. But Lord, keep us willing to listen to you. For your words are true and you speak through these scientists. Allow us to be healthy citizens and healthy parishioners. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.